Hello, uh, welcome back to another After Effects video. In this video, I want to just quickly look at something that I've been doing, and it's just to sort of like to understand the actual sort of space that, that it is sort of being operated in. And this is something that like, uh, it took me a while to kind of understand it, and I think I've got it, so I thought I might just share it here. So what I've got here, if you look at this animation, essentially it's this egg is going, if you imagine there's like a big cube in the middle of the, of the animation, the egg is going round and round. Uh, and there's a big cube in it, and it's just going along. It, forget about the y-axis for a minute. That's what it's doing, right? Uh, you could do another one going like over the top and bottom. So the important thing to realize with all the different axes is where they sort of are. Like if you look at the uh, info panel, you can see as the x-axis is the only one that sort of makes sense, right? The y-axis is kind of upside down in terms of like you would expect the the, the uh, this. It to be increasing as it goes upwards, but it's actually the other way around. It increases as it goes downwards, the y-axis. But like I say, I'm not going to focus on that one today. I just want to focus on the x. So if you wanted to have a position, right? Uh, so what the egg is doing is it's going from... If you imagine the center of the cube that this egg is in front of is at 0, 0, 0, we could say that my position here is 0, 0, minus 1,000. And that's similar to what I actually did, right? So... Uh, yeah, so we, so yeah, kind of because of the like registration point, you have to change it a little bit. But essentially, um, this is like this is like zero zero minus one thousand, right? So we get to like somewhere like this. Obviously, we're not messing around with the y, so you just have to just assume that that's what it is. So we could say, but just for, for all intents and purposes, we're like at zero zero minus a thousand, right? So what that means is essentially we're right in front of the cube in the middle, right? Then what we need to do is we need to go to the left hand side. So the only number that's going to change then, uh, and this is something that I think is to do with the coordinate system. Maybe that if I I didn't probably couldn't shouldn't have done it exactly like this. If I done it world axis and the whole way around, it would have worked better. But basically, you can see that the position there is getting less now. Uh, and basically, what I did is I just put the position to a point here where like uh, it would just be. It's, so it's at minus a thousand, so it's basically just on the very left at the front now. So if you then imagine where the point this goes from here, right? Uh, so you can see we've got the right uh, window here, right? So what it means is if I'm looking through the right, I'm not going to be on like the left face of the cube. So all that I expected to do is just go quite right across the screen in the next section. And that's exactly what it does, right? Now there's some stuff with the, uh, the rotation and stuff, but it doesn't, you just, you know, I just wanted it to basically look the same. So we go around, so we go down the left side of the cube now. So we're looking from the right hand side. So that's why it's going from left to right. If I did it the other way around, it would look the opposite way around. See? Um, but I find it more in my head, it's, it's easier to do it this way around. Uh, if everything's always going right. So you can see now we're going around the back. So now we're going down the side, right? So if you look at what's happening now, um, remember what the coordinates are in this, uh, in this situation, right? So, um, the the x axis is basically the z axis, right? Because this this is this is depth here, right? And then this is the y axis. So we've got the y and then the z, and this this is going to be increasing. Uh, well, yeah, the y axis is actually decreasing as we go up here, and then uh, the z axis. If we're looking from the right viewpoint, it's going to be increasing. That's kind of why I wanted to do it this way, because you can see then the z number increase as it goes across, right? So you can see. You can see that Z number increase, right? Um, so that was the point of that. Okay, so now when we get to this point, uh, well, kind of, let's see. Now you can see we're sort of like at the back here. And, the, and you can see, so the, the Z is 1,120. We're right at the back. That's why obviously it's, it is uh, smaller now, right? Um, so the best way to look at the back, probably from the front, right? Uh, that's the way I look at it. It's like, you could look at it directly from the back, uh, but one of these two is going to be the one. I just like it because if we look at it directly from the front here, um, we're going to get um, we're going to get the axes that we want, right? So then we know it's going to be increasing in the x. Nothing's going to be happening in the z, right? Because we're just going around the back of the cube here now. Uh, and again, we get to do that. The the, the sort of like transition it is going. So yeah, there are like a little bit of. Uh, there's like some movement in these numbers purely because I think like, I I don't know I'm not exactly sure why I sometimes get some movement in those numbers, 
I think I just need to be very, very careful with with how I'm I'm doing it. And like this mode doesn't necessarily help for like uh, if you want to do it in a sort of like very, very like strict mathematical way. I think I should have stuck with this. And I also messed around with it a lot. Maybe if I did it sometimes when you do it like first time, it seems to work better. And you just go you just go along. There are certain rules that, like, if you start messing with earlier keyframes, I remember this with masking paths. You don't want to like mess around with earlier stuff. So you want to be precise, I think, with each of your movements, and then and then just do it rather than what I've done, which is sort of mix and match, which it then sort of like uh, keeps some of the information. But anyway, so then you can see. So this, so we could say that like, um, so this period anyway. If you look at the difference between the um, between the x value here, right? You see, we've gone 2,000, right? So you can see that we're going along the back. Yes, there is like a little bit of a small deviation on the Z, but that, that is not what that was certainly not what I was meaning to do. I think maybe it's also to do with um, maybe the rotation actually affects that a little bit. But anyway, so now we can say we're going down the back of the cube, um, and then we get to the point which is here. So then, what do we need to do? We need to basically come up the right side of the cube right so probably a good place to look at that would be from the left right and just to and just to illustrate one more time um this is what it looks like if you go to the back right as you would expect right um so then we want to come on the, we come down the right side of the cube it's probably best to look at that position from the left because that way we can see it going from left to right in the actual viewport here which is more pleasant and you can see it's just about to get there uh, yeah, you could kind of see like the little uh, uh, this bit. I didn't I actually I forgot. I didn't even bother to because uh, I sort of thought like if it's not on the screen, why animate it? Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I probably I probably could have done that here. I sort of cheated a bit by just doing the um, yeah. I could have put this guy if I put this guy a bit later, it would work. Uh, yeah, we could do something like that. doesn't really change anything uh i mean yeah it's that's kind of interesting when something's off the screen do you need to even animate the rotation but yeah this is this is this the passage like like up the z like uh, you know like uh yeah i guess we'd say up the z-axis well the z-axis number is now getting less right that's the whole point of traveling down the right side of the cube so we look at the position here. You can see we need to get to. Uh, you see here we are at the back of the cube. Now we're traveling along the right. So you can see that. So this is I did this pretty accurately. Again, there is like a little uh, little deviation there, which I would love to see if I can get rid of that. I will probably be. I'm sure I'll be able to. It's not like affecting things too much, and it's in, it's in and on this scale. It's like such a limited amount. Um, but I like to get all the numbers perfect if I can. And then so you can see so you can see the distance we travel here, right? On the z-axis, we're going all the way from like, uh, was it like a thousand on the z? So we're going, so we're going right. So the way to look at it is like, like I mentioned, Lee, with with um, uh, the viewports, right? The left viewport will be slightly different because it means that this axis is going to be essentially the negative z-axis, right? So because this point is like a thousand where it starts, and then this point is minus a thousand, which is you know next to my eyes or whatever. So uh, and then again, it's going to be a, a negative uh, negative y axis as well on that one. Uh, so then we're there, and now you can see we're basically going to be like just about here. Uh, so I wanted to basically to get it into position, and that's the thing you want to get in the position, and then you can set, and then we can, and now you can see we're off the edge of the screen on the x axis. Again, forget about the y, and then we're right at the uh, next to basically next to our eyes, but just off the screen. So as soon as it sort of pops in, it should come in. There we go. A little bit later than that. Actually, I probably should have done. Um, but yeah, I mean, so that is kind of the thing.